Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. This is the fourth episode in a series on uh, how to edit a short film. And in this episode, we've gone through uh, how to proxy footage. We've gone through how to add a LUT or a look to your project. And we also covered how to sync and merge and rename your footage and organize into what we have here is the scene folder. When you double click on this, it has everything synced and merged into your project window here. And now we're ready to basically edit this scene. I do want to go over a couple more material uh, materials uh, that come with the download. If you find the download in the description for the exercise files, you'll extract them. And what you'll find is a folder that looks like this here. So here's the folder here, and when you open this up, you'll find these items right here. Let's go through these and tell you what, what's going on here. The first folder is the audio files. This is normal for dating, for, for transferring media off. When a DIT transfers media off, they usually name it by the date uh, that it was shot on, and this is 2023-0706 audio. And then down below that, you have the 2023-0706 footage. So if we open up this one, you'll see all the WAV files plus the baby monitor room tone that was recorded while we were on set. After that, you will arrow this down and you will have all the, keep in mind these these files have already been proxied. There's no reason to proxy these ones. As I mentioned, I have to do, I have to upload the proxy footage because if I uploaded the original red media, it's about 150 gigabytes and that's way too big and I can't really make a, a zip file or a download file uh, that's that large. So the proxying has already been done for you and here's the proxy media that you guys can practice uh, doing the, adding the LUT doing the syncing and merging, and also editing, sound mixing, and color grading. And the sound mixing and color grading will be coming up after the editing. So down here, you've got, uh, I've got some sound effects. I downloaded these from freesound.org. So freesound.org is a website that is basically an online database that is basically community sharing here. People can uh, join, they can log in, and then you can uh, search different sound effects, download them. You can upload your files for other people to use if you wish, if you have sound effects, ambient noise, other things you want to upload to this website, you can upload those as well. You can make a free login by hitting join, and then you can search these things and find, and that, that's basically where I got the baby crying sound effects. We'll get into this when we get into sound mixing, but down below that, we have fonts. These are a couple different uh, kind of spooky fonts that I downloaded. If you want to install a font, if you want to install these, you're more than welcome to. All you have to do is basically download these, and you double-click on the TTF files, and it will ask you if you want to install that. I already have these installed on my computer, but otherwise, it would have an install button right there, and I could install it, and then when you... But if, if you do this while Premiere Pro is open, you have to shut down Premiere and restart it, and then the fonts will, will appear there. Here's the other one right here. This is the one that I end up using was the Valium one that has kind of this crooked looking text. So if you want to use those fonts, you can choose your own font if you want to. If you want to install your own font, you can practice doing graphics with your own fonts, or you can download those. We do have a finished 2K H.264 version of the movie if you need to reference it at all to see what was done with sound effects and or color grading and or editing. And moving down, we've got some music files. These ones were used uh, from Incompetech. Incompetech is a good free movie music website. Spelled like you see here, incompetech.com. If you hit return, it'll take you to the website. And they do have a royalty-free music se section on here. If you click on the royalty-free, you can arrange them by feels. You can arrange them by tempo, genre, a whole bunch of different things. If we do a genre and let's go to horror film. There's tons of different songs you can use, but if you're going to be using these things, they are royalty-free, but you do have to credit the website for using this. So if you click on one of these right here and you listen now, this is what you have to copy and paste right there and put into your credits and giving Kevin McLeod uh, credit and Incompetech credit for the use of this music. Keep in mind, you're not allowed to use this music to make money if you're doing it for uh, for commercial reasons. You, there, are, there is a section here where you can actually pay to use music, such music for for a commercial project. And, and honestly, for, for the quality of music that you get here, it's a, it's a pretty decent price. I'm not being uh, sponsored by any of these websites. These are just a couple resources that I oftentimes use. There are lots, lots of other places to gather free music, but this is where the music came from that I grabbed. All right, I'm going to skip over production materials for this second right here and go to the last two because I want to concentrate on this one mostly. That's what this episode is really about are the production materials. Also embedded in the in the zip file that you download is the LUT that I'm using for this movie here as well. So if you go back to episode two, I show you how to install that LUT and add it as an, what's called an input LUT. And down below that, I do have some sound effects. These are some sound effects that I also grabbed from, from freesound.org. Dog barking, gusty wind, and rustling. So, so a few other items you can use in your sound mix there once we get to that episode. But let's go to our production materials. This is the one that I want to kind of concentrate on. And double click on this, open it up, and show you what we have in this here. All right, we've got a baby monitor continuity log. This is done by a script supervisor as, long, as well as this one right here. The baby monitor script line script and this continuity log go hand in hand. You don't necessarily need the DP line script or nor the shot list because those kind of changed as we, as we shot. 
But this line script right here shows the coverage for the director of photography's uh, footage. But the one that you actually need is going to, you can reference though, this was done in pre-production as was this right here. Just to show you what the shot list looks like, so this is just a Microsoft Word document. And this will have a list of all the shots they're planning on doing for that day. I believe one or two shots were added so that, and, and something might have been omitted from this. So the one that you really want to follow is going to be the script supervisor sheets. The other one shows the planned coverage if you open this up. I'm going to go into the details on the script supervisor's sheet here. But this one here is the director of photography that planned this. This is what's called a line script where it's showing planned coverage uh, for this entire scene. Since this was, this was planned coverage, the script supervisor actually did an actual line script of all the shots that did actually exist. So once again, you can reference this, but the best one to reference as an editor are the ones that actually show what was actually shot. So once again, the script supervisor, this is planned shot list, and then this is planned line script uh, right here, the DP line script. Uh, but then that was in pre-production. And then in production, the script supervisor did an actual continuity log and a line script to show coverage for the actual production. Let's show you what that looks like. First of all, I'm going to open up the line script and let's talk about what a line script is. This is the line script, but I'm going to open up the continuity log because once again, these two things go hand in hand. So you'll want the baby monitor scripty line script as an editor. You'll want the baby monitor continuity log as well. And if you want to just the plain script, just to read through it and see how it's supposed to play out, there is the screenplay. Oftentimes when an editor is editing, they have the screenplay printed out and sitting right next to them while they're editing. So if we open that up, here's the actual PDF from the screenplay. I'm going to close that for now. And let's look at the script supervisor continuity log. All right, so what this is, is this is a list of all the shots that are done on set from beginning to end. The very first shot that's going to be shot, no matter which one it is, is going to take on this number of this. This is the actual name of the shot right here where it says where it says scene. This is the actual number of the, that shot right there. They'll call it scene one. Scene one is the very first setup for scene one. Subsequent shots after that will just they'll add a letter onto them. So this shot, this next setup that's still within scene one, this is still all scene one, has the number scene one A. So here you have one setup, here you have two setups or shots. If you want to call them shots, I like to call them setups. One setup, two setup, three setup. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different setups for this one scene. Also on the continuity log, you have the number of takes. This is how many times it took to get it right. And the one that is circled is the good take. It doesn't mean there's not necessarily good footage in, in take one, takes one or two, but three was the best take. The director says that was the best take. I liked it the most. That's the one, let's, let's say that's the keeper. This does have sound with it as well. So this is not MOS, so it has sync sound with it. But yeah, scene one, they started rolling and when, ta and when they screwed up on take one or they didn't like it, they started over, they cut the shot and started it again and did a take two. They cut that shot and did a take three and got it right on take three. Over here it gives you a description of the shot, of the of the scene here, of the scene number. So this is a master shot. The master shot basically is a shot that takes place from the beginning to the end of the entire scene. So this one started rolling and it rolls from the beginning of the scene all the way to the end of the scene. And it's a minute and 30 seconds. So you can read through these to see what is basically, what's the gist of the scene. Let's just read one here. Start of scene, wide, camera dollies from wide to medium, uh, medium shot, pan from dad to monitor, dolly back as dad sits up, dolly back more as he lays down. Let's take a look at that and see if that's really the way it is. We'll go to scene one, take three. We'll take the, the best one, which is take three, double click on it. I'm going to go full screen by holding down control and tilde. And this is the same on a PC and a Mac. This is only about one of the only times I'm one of the only shortcuts I can think of though, where the Mac has the control as a shortcut rather than command. But this is the same on a PC or Mac. Control tilde opens up the entire shot. I'm going to hit LLL to forward through this. There's the slate. They're out of the way. Everybody's settling. She even says settle and let's play through this. And you'll hear, hear action here. LL. Right there she says action. Let me rewind. So there's action. So we start on wide, and then we dolly close to the, the, the father, and then you hear the, the baby monitor go off. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. L, L, baby monitor starts screaming. He looks over toward it. I'm going kind of fast forward here. Right. But he sits up. All right. And it says, just as the shot says, he uh, dollies backwards to reveal kind of, a, it said medium shot. Or I think it goes to full shot. We'll have to look at this shot here. Singing. And then the singing starts, and he says... He thinks it's his wife, and he says, thank you, honey. Thank you, honey. And then he goes back to bed. And Dolly's back to a wide shot. So 
Okay, so this was almost a master shot. The only shot that it does not have is a reveal at the end, which is the shot where the where, where his wife sits up in bed, and that's a different shot here because they can move in for a close-up on that, and that's the reveal. They didn't want to make it look like the bed was full with somebody behind him, so they just kind of wrinkled up the blankets and had nobody in the bed So because they want to make the appearance that the, the wife is not in bed. So the master shot almost lasts the entire shot. And let's let's go now. Let's go to our line script and take a look. And it starts off with S1 master here, and uh, then this thing plays through the first entire one page of the script, and then it says S1 continued. And it's got a little arrow pointing down to show that this shot continues on to the next page, and then it continues. So look at this. This is almost a master shot. It goes uh, then it arrows up to show it continues. You can see how they kind of link from the same geographic location, and then a dad closes his eyes, and that's where it stops, and it doesn't have the rest of the scene. So it's it's close to a master shot, not complete, just because they decided to make this. They wanted to cut to this final shot and not stay on the master shot. But this is good to show coverage. So the, And it even has this shot number right here. It says scene one. So the same number that's on this page right here, scene one, is the is on the line script, is on the line script. And this line shows how long the shot lasts. So it starts here with a straight line, then it goes through, has an arrow continuing the next page, and then it ends right there. So the next setup here is scene 1A. Let's find scene 1A. That's the second shot that was done. And scene 1A starts here. And they were doing this so they could get rid of the uh, get rid of the, the, the mother in this because they only needed her for one shot and that was it for the reveal. So they did this at the beginning. So this is the end of the movie too. They did this end scene here just to continue on to the uh, end of this uh, master shot right here. So S1A is the next one. It's a medium shot. Let's go back to our script supervisor continuity log. So 1A did one, two, three, four, four takes. Dad lays down cowboy frame, which is basically just below the hips up. Mom wakes up and says her last line. Then Dolly uh, to full close-up of Dad for final reaction. So let's take a look at that. And that's going to be scene 1A. Let's let's see, what's the take four, I think, was the best take. Yeah, scene four says it's the best take, 55 seconds long. So let's go to scene one, uh, 1A, take four. Camera. Gonna fast forward through this. L, 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 fast forward. And then the director says, action. action. <clears throat> so he lays down kind of the cowboy framing, as I mentioned, from kind of just below the hips up to the top of the head. Uh, the mother wakes up. Thanks for what? Tilt up to the mother. I think they do this again. One thing the script supervisor should have listed is that uh, the, this was on the fourth take, but they did it a couple times during the fourth take. Let's kind of look through this and see how many times they do it. So she lays down again, sits up. <laughs> And then while they're rolling, the last take on this, that's one thing the script supervisor did not list on this, is that it was the third instance on the fourth take. where They just kept the camera rolling. A take is where you keep the camera rolling and rolling until you yell cut. So, so this was a full take, but it, they did it three times, and the, the last one was the best one on the fourth take. So let's take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for what? <sighs> Dolly. And that's the best take right there. So that's that's the best one right there. So basically on that last take here, let's go back to our line script. Once again, it just starts here where he lays back down and then uh, the mom sits up here. He, the, there's a continued singing voice. That singing voice is not on the track right there. That's, that's going to be sound mixed in. But here the, uh, the mom sits up and says, hmm, thanks for what? And then, uh, then, then the voice continues to sing as they kind of turn with a panic look toward the back toward the baby monitor there. So yeah, there's some other. You can go through these shots. This is what editors do. They get this stuff when uh, on a set. Especially, this is especially helpful with a with a feature film. When you have just like hundreds and hundreds of takes or thousands of takes that you're going through, it's helpful to have the script supervisor log that's done during the production, that's done during the shoot, uh, where the editors can reference and say, I really need like a, a close-up of his feet going into the slippers. And look at this, 1C, it did a take one, close-up of feet going into the slippers. So, so if you go to the other sheet here, you can see 1C, how long it lasts. Let's see right there, 1C, it just has it right there in the script. After he first sits up here, see after a moment or two, dad sits up and peels back the blankets. He rotates his feet on to the bathroom floor, or on the bedroom floor, sorry. And that's where he slips his feet into the slippers. It doesn't say that in the script, but that was just added for a shot. Just to show his feet going to the slippers, implying that he's getting up and going to go uh, take care of the baby. 
So now we can go back to Premiere and we can go to 1C, take one, and there it is right there. So the other things on here, they will usually name the, the shot type, just the basic shot type. So there's three things that you'll usually see on the script, script supervisor uh, line script, and you'll see the scene number right there. So it's S1B, and then they will have the shot type right here, which is RAFCU, that is a right angle full close up right there. So the full close up is a framing where it's a very close up, it's just the kind of the top of the neck going up to the face. Uh, but they usually put the name of the character as well. One thing they should put here, three things is usually the number, the the camera type, and then of who, who it is. This should just say dad right here. Almost all the shots are the dad. So, But that's very helpful they put that on, on their line script. Uh, put the shot number or the scene. Yeah, put the shot or scene number, put the shot type, and then afterwards the character that the shot is of. So that's one thing they uh, forgot to put on there. So. Okay, so just wanted to show you those couple sheets if you want to use them in aid, uh, as an aid for, for your editing. But usually what the editor will have in front of them is the scripty line sheet that's done during production, not the director of photography's one, and then the script supervisor continuity log. You'll have one of these for each scene. This is for scene number one. It's the only scene available for this movie because once again, it's a short film and it was only one scene long. But if you move on to subsequent scenes in, in a feature film, you'll have the continuity logs and the line script for scene one, scene two, scene three, and so on. All right, with that being said, thanks for watching. The next episode, we're actually jumping into the editing finally.